So in our previous video, we looked at the different types of unemployment. So now let's look at the consequences or the impact that unemployment has on our society. There's two ways to look at this. You can look at this in terms of the social costs or in terms of the economic costs. Well, let's start with the social costs. If you have high unemployment, lots of people looking for work and can't find it, then we tend to see an increase in the crime rate. There's more violence, um, particularly domestic violence, right? Think it's stressful if you're not sure where your next paycheck is coming from. There's an increase in theft and destruction of property. We also see the toll of high unemployment on uh, mental health. There's an increased rate of heart attacks and stroke. All that stress of not knowing where your next paycheck is going to come from can have quite an impact on your health, both mental and physical. And we tend to see an increase in the number of suicides when there's a high unemployment rate. So there's quite a social cost to having high unemployment. Since this course is an economics course, let's focus on the economic cost. When we talk about the economic cost of high unemployment, what we're measuring is the GDP gap. The GDP gap is the difference between potential GDP, so how big your economy could be if you utilized all your factors of production. So what are the factors of production? Land, labor, capital, and enterprise. So at potential GDP, we are at full employment. That is, we have some frictional and some structural unemployment, but really most of the people who want to have a job have a job. So at potential GDP, it's the ultimate size the economy could be if we're using all our factors of production. Well, if we then subtract the size that our economy actually is, so we'll call that our actual GDP, we'll get the size of the gap. That is, how much have we lost in terms of production of goods and services because we have at high unemployment? Now, this actual GDP can be measured in real or nominal terms, right? So you just want to specify because that means your gap is going to be in real or nominal terms. So you can decide if you're going to include inflation or not in that. So let's look at how we would calculate that and what it tells us. Well, when we look at the gap, if your potential GDP is more than your actual GDP, so the size the economy could be if it utilized all of its resources is bigger than the current size of your economy, then your economy is likely contracting. So you're in a recessionary gap. You're in that contractionary period of the business cycle. And remember, if that contraction happens for more than two quarters or six months, you're by definition in a recession. So if the actual GDP is less than the potential, we call this a recessionary gap. If, however, the actual GDP is more than your potential GDP, then you are in an expansionary gap. So if we think about the phases of the business cycle, right, we have that expansionary period. So first, how is it even possible for your actual GDP to be more than your potential GDP? Well, let's suppose that your economy is growing so quickly that you're using all of your workers and now you're asking them to work overtime. You can't find enough workers, so you're bringing them in, you're bringing in more foreign workers, right? Temporary foreign workers to help with all of the work that has to be done. In that case, the size of your economy is more than the potential GDP because the potential GDP is if we used all the land, labor, capital, and enterprise in our country. Right? If we start bringing in people from other countries, then where economy is really booming. And so this expansionary gap is where the economy is very quickly growing. Well, if we don't have enough resources, enough factors of production to meet demand, what happens to prices? So how do you get workers when everybody already has a job? You pay them more, 
So what happens to wages? They go up. We don't have enough raw materials, so we're having to kind of beg, borrow, steal, compete to get them. That drives up prices. So this expansionary gap is also called an inflationary gap. We're concerned about the expansionary gap because it means the economy is growing so fast, it's going to drive up prices and wages. We're going to get inflation. We're also concerned about a recessionary gap because it means that the economy is contracting and we're not producing as much as we could be. We're not utilizing all of our resources. There's goods and services that we're not making and so our economy is not as big as it could be. So we want to be able to identify if we have a recessionary gap or an inflationary gap. Well, when we calculate the GDP gap, it's traditionally used to calculate recessionary gaps. So notice you'll calculate potential minus actual. If your GDP calculation gives you a positive number, you have a recessionary gap because your potential is more than your actual. If you go to calculate the GDP gap and you get a negative number, it means that this actual here is more than the potential. So a negative GDP gap is actually indicative of that expansionary or inflationary gap. And I know that's a bit counterintuitive, right? Because the recessionary gap is bad, so it should be negative. Expansionary is growing, so why isn't it positive? And it's simply because the GDP gap calculation was originally designed to focus on the impact of a recession. So it's potential minus actual. So you should be able to figure out how big the GDP gap is and whether we have a recessionary or expansionary gap. Later this semester, we want to figure out how do we close the gap? How do you fix the recessionary gap? How do you fix the inflationary gap? What can we do about it? So that's where we're going. All right, so we need to be able to calculate the size of the gap. Well, the way you calculate the gap is what is called Okun's Law. So Okun's Law says that we can actually approximate the size of the GDP gap by looking at the amount of cyclical unemployment. Because remember, if you're at potential GDP, then you're utilizing all of your resources, all of your land, labor, capital, and enterprise. So at potential GDP, there should be no cyclical unemployment. It's that contractionary period of the business cycle that's causing that cyclical unemployment. At potential GDP, the economy's not contracting, we're not in a recessionary gap, so we should have no cyclical unemployment. This doesn't mean you have zero unemployment. It simply means we're at the natural rate of unemployment. So the natural rate of unemployment or full employment, remember we have a definition of that. What is the definition of the natural rate of unemployment or full employment according to the OECD? The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development de defines the natural rate of unemployment as an unemployment rate between 4 and 6.4%. Now, depending on what country you're in, your natural rate or full employment will be some number between 4 and 6.4%. And different economists have studied this natural rate of unemployment so there's not even consistent agreement within a country. There's some debate as to what is the true natural rate. So remember, this formula is an approximation of the GDP gap. So let's assume for our discussion today that the natural rate of unemployment in the U.S. So we'll say the natural rate of unemployment in the U.S. is 4%. And let's assume the natural rate of unemployment in Canada is 5%. Now, some economists put it as far up as 5.5%, but let's use 5%. So how come the numbers are different when our economies are so similar? Recall our earlier discussion about how the U.S. and Canada are different in how they calculate the unemployment rate. 
And so because of this, we have to do an adjustment to the unemployment rate. Remember, you have to take the Canadian unemployment rate and go down 1% to compare it to the US. Okay, so if we assume the natural rate of unemployment is 5% for Canada for the purposes of this discussion, let's find our GDP gap. Well, the first thing we need is we need to know our cyclical unemployment. Cyclical unemployment is the unemployment above that natural rate. So to find your cyclical unemployment, you're going to take the unemployment rate and subtract that natural rate. Now, a key thing to know about Okun's law is that the cyclical unemployment is in decimal form. So to make this calculation work, we have to put our numbers in decimal form. So the natural rate is 0 0.05. So now we need to find the current unemployment rate. So we can go to Stats Canada to find the unemployment rate. And we can scroll here and find the unemployment rate. Now, because you're doing an assignment where you're gonna find the current GDP gap, I'm actually going to use the 2019 numbers instead of 2020. If you were trying to find it for 2020, you'd click there and you could scroll all the way down, all the way down. And you could, for example, click here on table one and find the unemployment rate for everyone 15 and older. Okay. If you were trying to find the unemployment rate for Alberta, perhaps you could use table three, which looks at it by province. I'm actually going to switch here to a bit older data. So I'll leave it to you to find the current numbers, but let's use August of 2019. So here we have people 15 and older. So that's everyone that's counted in the labor force. And we have an unemployment rate here of 5.7. So let's go back here and we need to turn that into a decimal form. So 0 0.057. So that means our cyclical unemployment is 0 0.057 minus 0 0.05, which is 0 0.007. Now, right away, we can tell what type of gap we have because we look at this number and this number, notice the current unemployment rate or in 2019, the unemployment rate is bigger than the natural rate. So do we have cyclical unemployment? Yes. So where does that tell you you are on this business cycle? Well, if you have cyclical unemployment, you're in this contractionary period, which means what type of gap will we have? So we're gonna find a recessionary gap because we have cyclical unemployment. If instead, when we went to do this calculation down here, if the natural rate was more than the unemployment rate, it would tell us that we had negative cyclical unemployment, which means that we're in that expansionary period. And so we would have an expansionary or inflationary gap. Oops. Okay, so we found we have cyclical unemployment. So we're looking at a recessionary gap. Now we need to figure out how big the gap is. So the other piece we need here is our actual GDP. We go to Stats Canada. I'll just go back here. And we know from that main page of Stats Canada, we can do real GDP by expenditure and click in there. And we scroll all the way down to our tables at the bottom. Now remember that actual GDP can be in terms of nominal or real. If you are doing nominal, that's going to be your first table here. If you are doing real, look at tables two and three. Notice they say chained dollars. If they are chained dollars and they give you a year, that year is the base year. 
They've taken out inflation by looking at prices from 2012. So you can see which one gives you which one. So if we were to use real GDP, we click here on table two or three. Now I'm going to just uh, go to some older data here, okay, because you're going to look up the newer data. So let's look at 2019. Remember, we were focusing on August of 2019, so that's second quarter. And here we're looking at GDP, and notice it's providing it to me in chain dollars. So I'm looking at real GDP. Okay, second quarter of 2019, I can see consumption spending. I can see investment spending, all those pieces of our aggregate expenditures, our, our spending, um, our expenditure approach to GDP, right? Here's exports, here's imports. What I want is the second to the last one here, which is our gross domestic product. So 2092705. So remember that number, 2092705. Two zero nine two seven zero five. Well, if we look here, it tells us that we have to make an adjustment to this number. It's missing some zeros, okay? And so our GDP is actually in the trillions. So thousand, million, billion, trillion. Okay, so two trillion, ninety-two billion, seven hundred and five. Let's see, two trillion, ninety-two billion, seven hundred and five million, and we need some extra zeros here. So notice we've added six zeros here, and if we go back, we see six zeros displayed here too. So that's how we know we're doing the right num, adding the right number of zeros. Okay, all right. So we're at 2 trillion is our actual GDP in real terms for 2019. Our cyclical unemployment at that same time in 2019 is this 0.007. So to find the GDP gap, we do 2.5 times 0.007 times that 2 trillion. Okay. So we want to throw that into our calculator to see what we end up with. So let's see. I have a calculator here. Well, it's good to use a good old phone when you don't have a calculator on hand. So let's type our numbers in here. So we have 2.5 times 0 0.007 times 2092705 and then add three zeros. Oh, this calculator doesn't go that high. Oh, that's no good. Give me a second to flip over my laptop then and pull up a calculator that goes higher. All right. So let's pull up our calculator here. All right, so we need our calculator. Okay, so we were doing 2.5 times 0.007, okay, times, and then we have 2092705. So right now it's saying 2 million. We need to get it to 2 trillion. So we add some zeros. And there we have thousand million billion, so we need three more zeros. Okay, so there we have two billion. Now, how do you know that? After before the after the first comma, that's a thousand. After the next comma is a million. After the next comma is a. Wait, do we have too many here? Is a billion, and the next one is a trillion, right? Thousand million billion trillion. Okay, so I think we're okay. All right, so when we do this, we end up with our 2.5 times our 0 0.007. And we end up with 36, how many is that? We got 1,000 million, 36 billion. 
So our GDP gap here, oh. our GDP gap here is equal to 36 billion. And it's actually 36 billion, 622 million, 337,500. Okay, so our 36 billion is a recessionary gap. Notice that's a positive number in our calculation. So there's $36 billion more worth of goods and services we could be producing if that unemployment rate wasn't above the natural rate, if we didn't have this cyclical unemployment. So how big is potential GDP? How big could our economy be? Well, to find potential GDP, we're actually just rearranging this formula here. So to find potential GDP, what we need to do is take our actual GDP and add the GDP gap. All we've done is taken this part of the formula here and moved it over. So we're adding actual GDP and the GDP gap. So our GDP gap is 36 billion, okay? And our actual GDP was at 2,000 and, oh, let's go back, 2,092 billion. I can tell that because again, thousand million billion. So if I cut it off here, it's 2,092 billion. Okay, I cut it off here, it's two trillion. So we can take 2092 billion plus 36 billion to get our potential GDP. Or we could do the full calculation because we already have that 36, 600 in our calculator and we would simply need to add to it, let's see if we can do this here, we would need to add to it the two zero nine two seven zero oh, five zero 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 zero. So here we have thousand million billion trillion that we're adding to our thirty six billion. Okay. And so notice here, this 92 plus 36 is 129. So what you end up with is, oops, I don't know what that is. Go away. So we can put it as 2129 billion. or 2.1 trillion is the size of our potential GDP. And the actual not full number is 2 trillion, 129 billion, 327 million, 337,500. So what we're saying is that the size our economy could be is 2.1 trillion, but it's only 2.092 trillion because we're missing $36 billion worth of goods and services because of the cyclical unemployment. So that we can compare year after year, we can look at our recessionary gap or expansionary gap as a percentage of potential GDP. So we can look at GDP gap divided by potential GDP to see what percentage of that size our economy could be if we utilize all our resources, what percentage we've lost. So in this case, we do this calculation, we would be, well, we don't need that anymore. We would be taking our 36 billion and dividing our potential. Remember our potential is 2.1 trillion Okay. But because we're trying to do a division, we need it to be in the same terms. So you either need to write 36 billion divided by 2129 billion, or you need to write out the full numbers. 
because they need to be in the same measurements and here they're in billions of dollars. So 36 divided by 2129. Let's see if we can't get our calculator to come back here. We want 36 divided by 2.129. Notice we get a bunch of decimals. We want it in percentage, so let's do times 100. And what we get, 1.69. Is that the size of the economy we've lost because we are in that recessionary gap is 1.69% or about 1.7%. On this graph, you can see what's been happening with the gap over time. So the way this graph is laid out is that they have the recessionary gaps here on the bottom and expansionary gaps on the top. So notice that in 2004, we had neither a recessionary gap or an expansionary gap. Now we're saying that in 2019, we have a recessionary gap that's about here at 1.7%. To give you a little bit of a comparison, in 2011, so remember there was the Great Recession in 2008, 2009. By 2011, the recessionary gap was at 3 0.38 percent okay so what's that about here ish okay and then in 2013 so two years later the recessionary gap was about 1.96 percent so 2011 2012 2013 recessionary gap is getting smaller and smaller okay 2008 2009 was that great recession. We start to recover and close that recessionary gap. For parts of Canada, 2015, again, some contraction. And now we're into 2020, again, seeing contraction. So figure out what the GDP gap is in 2020. Is the gap closing? So like in 2019, we were at 1.7%. Are we getting closer? to getting out of that contractionary period or has it gotten worse, okay? So it takes a long time to recover from recessions. Even though the economy starts to look better and we hire more people, we continue to suffer that economic cost caused by that GDP gap. There are also years where we have expansionary gaps. And when the economy really starts booming, it's really growing, right we don't have enough resources we don't have enough workers we're paying everybody overtime right? we have to be concerned as well about those inflationary periods right too much expansionary gap triggers higher wages and higher prices 